Well, welcome everyone. It's Dr. Ariel here and welcome to the Affirmations of Excellence podcast season seven. Uh, this is a place for you to take devotional time to fuel your faith. And I'm excited to be able to present more content to you uh, for this podcast as a space where we focus on excellence. Excellence is a result of a well-lived, prosperous life with God at the center. And as I make more and more content, I'm really excited about the topics that are going to be rolled out this particular season. It's season seven. A lot of folks don't really uh, consistently roll out their podcast and produce things of that nature. It is a task if you are thinking about producing any type of content um as easy as it may sound as easy as it may look it is not not that simple uh it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of effort and a lot of resources but you don't need a ton of things you just need the right language and the right heart and the right voice and uh, you can do it so I'll tell you a little bit about where this podcast came came from for me. Uh, 2019, I had been traveling the world and I had been pivoting my business or had pivoted my business from PR into the diversity, equity, inclusion space um, and was asked to do uh, some coaching for millennial leaders. And I was like, oh, millennial, I can do that. And then I realized, oh, you, you, you don't know. You don't know what that means. You know how to strategize. You know how to apply competence, cultural competence and communication to things. But you need to really lean into this space. So after getting a series of certifications, I became an executive coach. I became a certified DEI a practitioner. And I started to go into organizations and train their millennial leaders or coach rather. Coaching and training are two different things. I started to coach their millennial leaders. And in doing so, um, it led me, it just opened up this world of executive coaching for me and gave me an opportunity to have speaking engagements all over the globe for big companies and even some small nonprofits and higher ed organizations or ed education-based organizations and some also a professor. So this work just continued to grow and grow and grow and grow all over the globe. And I realized around 2019, um, as I was finishing my doctorate, I realized it actually it was 2018. I started to realize that God was shaping my voice for something greater. And I had to be very serious and listen to that calling. Um, and right around that time, uh, I wrote a series of book titles, particularly one that I wanted to anchor around spiritual excellence, because I felt that was the space that God was calling me to how to help us know the difference between culture's way and God's way. Well, there's a virtue of excellence that is centered around making that distinction. And that's what I wanted to focus my work on in the personal development space and the spiritual development space. And it is something that God has endorsed for me. And I'm so grateful. And so that's where the Affirmations of Excellence podcast came from. I wrote down a, a series of topics. I wrote down like 52 topics because I was going to create a weekly devotional podcast. That is not easy to do. Um, and I soon realized it wasn't that easy to do. And so it led me to create a, a series of topics uh, that I could record for the podcast in episode format, in devotional format as episodes for the podcast uh, for you to take as a devotional. Um, and for you to be able to use and apply to your life and share with others. And so here we are in season seven. And uh, I'm really excited about this first topic in the in the episode or in the season is really interesting because we are talking about something that I'm probably you are sure you are wrestling with, and that is adulting. <laughs> Whether you're juggling uh, multiple responsibilities, making big life decisions, just trying to keep it all together, adulting can be very overwhelming. But here's the good news. It doesn't have to be something that you tackle alone as it doesn't have to be something that you tackle without purpose. So just for a few minutes together, we're going to talk about how to approach adulting with a spiritual mindset in a way that not only helps us, of course, get through the day to day, but also helps us stay grounded in something bigger. So welcome to the Affirmations of Excellence podcast. And thank you for being here. You know, something interesting I found um, that in 2019, more than 60% of young adults reported feeling lonely, but 
I realized that it takes deep connection and authentic conversation to really change your mind, your day, your perspective, and even your life. And that's why I partnered with Kinship. Kinship is a community platform for authentic conversations and real connection. It is built to help us find our people and share our discovered humanity. What's so interesting about Kinship is that it opens up, the sessions open up with a, a talk, a short like TED talk. And as you go into the topic, it may be something like well-being, setting boundaries, uh, relationships, personal growth, a lot of various different topics that we just, you know, deal with everyday life type topics. And so you open up with a speaker and then you put into these small groups where you can really bond and connect with one another over life experiences. And there's a facilitator there to guide you, um, someone like me. Uh, so if you are looking for a space like that, or that sounds like a space that you want to be a part of, I welcome you to join me on Kinship. Go to our Kinship dot com and you can actually join there for free get a one month free subscription uh with a promo code uh specifically put in my promo code dr ariel d-r-a-e-i-r wait can't spell my name <laughs> d-r-a-e-r-i a L. There we go. Dr. Ariel. Don't spell doctor all the way up. Just do DR. Okay. Um, but thank you so much for um, being open to that. Try it out. I think you'll like it. You might as well try it. Um, you are going to get the one month free and I promise you, you're going to probably want to stick around. No, you're not going to probably want to stick around. You're going to want to stick around. Trust me. Um, so many people have reported, 94% people of users have reported that they felt feeling better, more empowered, stronger, more intentional about how they're going to live their lives and feeling like they were really, truly in community. So go to ourkinship.com and check it out. Now, what's so interesting about that stat is that it really gives us what we need to center uh, this time together around, around the devotional about, about adulting. I think what's so interesting about adulting is that as we consider the the idea of it is that we often only mention or refer to adulting as adulthood or this aspect of adulthood when we're annoyed by the certain tasks of life, like, like we're frustrated, we're angry, we're annoyed, we're in a tight space, uh, we don't feel confident, we've got bills to pay, right, <laughs> and responsibilities. That is when we start to say, I'm adulting, right? And it's interesting because it feels like we're having this public crisis of finding a adulting perplexing. So how do we adult right? What is adulting and how do we do it God's way? Recently, this word adulting has become put pretty popular. It's this colloquial term that has emerged in, in recent years to describe the process of behaving like a responsible adult. And so it encompasses all those tasks. And I'm sure we've seen hashtags, we've seen podcasts, we've seen a lot of different things that are centered around the concept of adulting. There's even a song by one of my favorite singers, two of my favorite singers, actually. Is it two? Oh, it's one. It's just one, I think. Jonathan McReynolds. Jonathan McReynolds has a song about adulting or called adulting. And uh, I can't remember if Molly Music is featured on that one or not, but both are two of my favorite gospel singers, singers in general, right? But there are even songs about adulting, Netflix series about adulting, right? It's, it's, it has been immersed, uh, it, it has been, em we've been emerged in the concept rather throughout all aspects of media. And so as we think about it, it's funny because that term is just a verb where it means to behave like an adult or to do the associated tasks that come with being an adult. So I want to un unpack with us today what this could feel like and what this means and where a lot of this came from um, as it relates to why we're so troubled by adulting. And I think a lot of it is in result to the fact that millennials uh, of which I am one, millennials, Gen Zs, as well as maybe a few Gen Xers um, have, have delayed some of the milestones that have come with uh, adulthood, like uh, marriage and home ownership and settling into kind of this stability of a career and things of that nature. So the things that many times our parents and grandparents uh, associated with being an adult we don't experience those things 
immediately or as soon as they did. And so a lot of those traditional markers of adulthood feel very challenging for a lot of us right now. And for even those of us who have achieved those milestones, the reality is life is just different. Society is different. Culture is different. And so these times that we're in um, come with a lot of different challenges that didn't exist when our parents were becoming adults. And so this term adulting has allowed us to bond over shared experiences and create a sense of generational identity. You know, I mentioned earlier when, um, and I was talking about the work that I'd done in the intergenerational space as an executive coach and as a DEI practitioner. I got an opportunity to write my first book. It's called The Original Millennial Lessons in Leadership for the Millennial, for the millennial Generation. And as I immersed myself in the research for this book, I found out so many different things about how generations form, how generations take on the formation in society and, and how culture influences very, uh, different generations generations in the decisions that they make. And so when we think about the influence on generations, we realize that there is a stigma many times around each generation. And now, of course, adulting with that term, there's a stigma around it too. But I believe that if we look at some biblical principles, we can help reduce the stigma around admitting that adulthood can just be difficult. And I think in previous generations, there was no way to, to exclaim and explain the frustration around growing up. Right. And so as we experience this extended transition into adulthood, that thing can get kind of tricky. Right. I know all of us probably knew someone or maybe you were that kid who always used to say, man, I can't wait till I grow up. I can't wait till I get out of here. I'm going to be grown. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I wasn't that kid. <laughs> I enjoyed childhood. I love the idea of maturity and growing up and becoming an adult. And I was being raised and reared by my mother to be that person. Um, but I never had was in a rush to grow up. I cherished childhood um, and I felt like I was pretty prepared for adulthood as well. But I think there are some reasons why adulthood can be so, or adulting, not adulthood in general, but the concept of adulting can be so challenging. I think mainly because we spend a lot of time thinking differently about why we're here on this earth. I think from a perspective of growing up in God's ways, sometimes we refuse to accept the maturity that's in front of us. It doesn't mean that adulthood is anything that we can escape. As long as we live, we're going to be an adult. As we've, as, as we've transitioned from childhood, we're going to be an adult. But I think by virtue, the negligence or the refusal to really accept the reality of, of maturity can really uh, keep us from growing the way God wants us to grow. And it can really stunt our growth in any other areas of life beyond spiritual. Because the gift of life comes from God, we really must accept this maturation process. And so I think instead of lamenting over the adulting process, what if we just accepted the, the maturity that it takes to grow up in God's ways? What if we frame adulting as this practice of growing into spiritual maturity? And if we thought about it that way, I think we would better understand our faith in a more, uh, in a broader way and in a more granular way too, in a more personal way. And then I think we also, if we could see adulting as a way to grow up in God's ways, as an opportunity to really demonstrate our ability to put our faith and trust in him, looking at the qualities he's given us and the characteristics he's given us, the behaviors he's shaped us to, to look more like his son, we get an opportunity to see life is great. It is worth living. No matter what the challenges are, we have a way to go to God and be able to connect with him and then celebrate and improve the virtues that he wants us to embody. But I believe, again, there's some reasons why adulting feels so hard. One is because we're adulting alone. We're doing it all by us. I am sitting here in my home recording this episode alone, right? And I've gotten accustomed to that even in my adulthood. I'm even the only child, but I've very much gotten accustomed to being by myself. And most of my friends too, even the ones who are, are partnered and married and have children <laughs> have figured out even like the comfortability of being alone, right? 
our society, particularly in the U.S., um, we live alone more than ever before. And I think adulting, one of the reasons why adulting can be so challenging is because we're not doing it in community. Because we are adulting alone, we have community at large. We have community, but we're not growing up in community. Almost kind of similar to how you grew up with other kids or how you grew up with other people around you and your family. We're not doing that enough. Our families are scattered. Um, I don't live where my immediate family lives in, in the same city. We're just kind of so spread out. And you can go days, especially in COVID or even since COVID, you can go days without even interacting with another human being in the flesh, in person. We can go days without even leaving our house. We can go days without even feeling the, the warmth and the touch and the intimacy and the love of another human being by even just a handshake or eye contact or, hu or hug. So yeah, I can see we're adulting alone. And that's one of the reasons why adulting feels so annoying. Another reason why adulting feels so annoying is that we're adulting too fast. Because this world we live in is so fast paced, it can be hard to slow down and honor the adulting process. And so many of us, especially those of us who are millennials, um, because we're accustomed to such a fast paced society, we rushed into things or we move really fast and said, I got to get that car. I got to marry that person. I got to be in that relationship. Some of us, some of us didn't rush to marriage. There's, there are stats that show that millennials did not rush to marriage, <laughs> but we rushed into something, right? We rushed into a purchase. We rushed into a decision on a career or a job. And instead of pacing ourselves, we grew up really quickly. And I think that's the point I want to make is that um, the one of the reasons why adulting is so challenging is that we really grew up too fast and we took on too much responsibility too soon. And here's the key to this. We took on the weight by ourselves. Another reason why I believe adulting is so frustrating and feels so annoying for us is because we're adulting for ourselves. So I mentioned the first reason was that we're adulting alone and we're adulting by ourselves. But this next one is about adulting for ourselves. You know, we often hear this thing about my truth, right? Hashtag goals and all these different things that we see in society about what we get caught up in. And I think we get caught up in that truth and those accomplishments and the progress that we're making in life to the extent where we get kind of selfish, not kind of selfish. We get very selfish, or should I say, we get really self-centered. And because we're adulting for everyone, for no one but ourselves, not for everyone, we're adulting for everyone. Uh, for, let me let me rephrase that. Let me correct that. We're adulting for no one but us, right? We're adulting for ourselves. Because we're adulting for ourselves, our choices get so self-centered that we lose sight. Why the things that we do, even are part of our purpose, we lose sight why we do the things that we do. We lose sight, sight around um, who's impacted by our decisions because as long as we want it and the benefit goes directly to us, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or feels just as long as we're satisfying ourselves. And that just in and of itself is enough to make adulting hard. Another reason why I believe adulting is so hard is that we are adulting outside of purpose. I take a purpose. I believe in purpose. I take it very seriously. I believe deeply in the concept of purpose and that nothing can destroy or change our purpose. But it is not something that you can just wait to pursue or take lightly. And I believe when we uh, when we're challenged by the concept of, of adulting, it is because we've spent so much time being told to pursue our passion instead of our purpose. And when we pursue passion instead of purpose, we miss the chance to get deeper. We miss the chance to start living out our life in purpose. We start living out life with these surface level desires, you know, things related to, I got to work at this company. I have to know these people or whatever that is, right? We start to really focus on things that don't have any substance because we're operating outside of purpose and we're doing and wanting and desiring things that really don't match God's design for our lives. Another reason why I believe that we um, find adulting so challenging and so annoying 
is the last reason and the most important reason. We are adulting without God. We know who God is, and we can find a lot of stats and reports about um, adulting uh, or about uh, younger generations, Gen Zs, millennials, and even Gen Xers, and even baby boomers too. We can find a lot of stats and reports around um, the decline in church attendance, the decline in um, uh, in people who believe in Christianity and practice Christianity. Instead of saying they're a Christian, they believe that they're spiritual or whatever that means. Like I have a relationship with God, but I don't go to church. All those type of nuances around um, being a believer. But I believe the, the the most the most challenging and the most important and the most uh, significant reason and impactful reason why we find adulting so perplexing and so annoying is because we're not doing it with, with God. We're not growing up in God. We're not living out God's calling for our lives. We're not living with God. We're not in relationship with him. I believe that we want God's blessings, but we don't want the burdens that those blessings bring. We want God to grow us, but we don't want the grooming and the pruning that comes with the growth process. We want him to save us, but we don't want him to tell us what to do. We want him to reserve a victory for us and, and fix it, Jesus. <laughs> but we don't want to live life his way. And I believe that is the primary reason of all the other reasons. That is the chief reason why adulting is so annoying for us. But I believe that when you adult without God, you really operate like that little kid who couldn't wait to grow up. You're denying the process of spiritual development and the necessary role that it plays in your life. You are skipping the steps to cultivate a real connection with him. And instead, you settle for this cliche God, as I said earlier, right? This just, yeah, I believe he is. Yeah, God, maybe, oh, maybe she, God, whatever, like all these different aspects of, of what we can make up about God. And we ignore the provisions that he's already set aside for us. And instead we do it for ourselves. We're very self-reliant. We also will adult without God for the aspect of, you know, we trusted him and we believed in him specifically for a thing. And when that thing didn't happen, Instead of clinging closer to him to get clarity, we chose to trust and believe in ourselves or something else altogether. And maybe you did experience some success and some progress in life and you believe that came from God. And instead of locking in with him deeper, you arrived to a place where you neglected to serve him as you once did. And he became just less of a priority to you. And all of those scenarios that can happen I like to point out um, for this episode, the uh, illustration in Mark chapter 11, verse 14, where Jesus curses a fig tree because it did not bear fruit. Now I'll go into this in full detail in the audio episode, so I won't, I won't unpack that here. But if you, if you study and go to Mark chapter 11, verse 14, you see that there was a fig tree that Jesus approached. And he cursed it ultimately because it didn't have any fruit. The reality is, or the truth is in the book, then the Bible, that the fig tree had leaves, which was showing a sign of maturity. When, but when Jesus approached it, the tree was truly barren. It had no fruit. Now, what when I did a little digging, I found that these trees at some point are supposed to have small buds that come as an early sign that their fruit is coming, right? So the fig trees will have leaves, then they'll have these small buds to signify that the figs are coming. And then as the figs come in, you're able to pick it and pull the fruit. This is what Jesus was looking for. The buds are usually edible. So even if it's not a full fig, it hasn't fully matured, the buds that exist are edible and serve that a, uh, serve as a clue that the figs will ultimately come come into bloom. But what's interesting is that this particular tree that Jesus was speaking of in Mark eleven was growing, but it wasn't showing any real signs of maturity. There were leaves, 
and it should have been buds, but there was not a bud for him to be able to pick. The leaves were a signal that there was growth. The leaves were a signal that there was maturity, but there weren't any buds or fruit to signal that. And so I think as I, we parallel adulting, I think this is what we try to do in adulting, in adulthood. We try to grow out of, se out of season and we end up getting our maturity and our growth process all mixed up and, and out of whack because ultimately this tree was growing out of season. And that was the Jesus's frustration in telling this story. And I think what is interesting as we unpack that and we make that application, we see ultimately that growth is inevitable, but maturity is not. Maturity is a choice. Maturity is something that has to happen in seasons. And while the growth can progress, you can grow. We are expected to grow. But how we fashion that growth and how we allow God to fashion that growth is ultimately how, ultimately how we come into maturity. You know, as we think about, and I'm going to give a couple points I think we need to consider in adulting, specifically as it relates to how to do it God's way. But I think we should be, it's important to remember that this world is temporary. So as we see the hashtags and the memes and even the 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 uh, songs and different things about adulting, we have to remember that these responsibilities we have, these challenges, and even the joys of adulthood are all a part of a bigger picture. They get us closer toward eternity. We are on a journey toward eternity. And when we live with an eternal perspective, we find that our priorities shift our frustration shift and we begin to focus on what's truly matter, what truly matters and live out our lives in gratitude because God calls us to live with eternity in mind, to invest our time, resources, energy in things that have lasting value. This means loving others, serving God, fulfilling purpose with the understanding that no matter what frustrations you have, no matter what bill you have, no matter what, what annoyance is, is challenging you in your career or frustration you're bumping up against, the ultimate goal is to glorify God and spend eternity with him. So no matter how many birthdays you've had or how life has treated you thus far, here are a couple of things I want you to remember as you, as you face the challenges of adulting. Remember this we are all works in progress as you follow christ he does not expect you to get it right all the time and you shouldn't put that pressure on yourself as you follow christ he does a work in you that takes a lifetime and it's it is it's, it is his infinite love that he applies to us and he gives to us because he's committed to shaping us each day. He blesses us with grace. He guides us every step of our journey. I want you to remember that we should acknowledge the privilege of responsibility. You don't have to, you get to. It is an honor to be trusted by God. It is an honor to serve him. It is an honor to grow old. It is honor. It is an honor to have the bounty of age added to your life. So instead of lamenting over adulthood and adulting, think about the way in which growing older comes with a privilege. It comes with an honor. And this is the way we grow in our faith and experience the abundant blessings that he provides to us. Remember this, we have to consider the consequences. Imagine what would happen if you decided not to show up for life. Who's depending on you? Who out in the world or in your life is waiting on your testimony? God in his mercy covers us with grace to ensure that even when we falter, his love and blessings continue to support and guide us. We have a lot at stake if we just choose to um, not grow in God's ways and not appreciate this journey of adulthood. Remember this on your journey in adulting. We will all fail and need his forgiveness because no one gets it right all the time. God has unwavering love and forgiveness and it's always available. He covers faults, he covers fail, failures, and he renews us with his blessings and grace each day. I want you to remember this. We all need help. God does not promise us perfect days, but his boundless compassion surrounds us with his love and the support of community. 
The blessing of community is something that we have to cherish and take advantage of. So many of us have access to community and we don't we don't cherish it or lean into it as much as we should. I, for one, someone who preaches community, <laughs> who 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 knows how to build community and create community and and has been has been championed by in doing so. I too have to take advantage of that. I too have to be sure not to isolate along this journey of adulthood because there's a blessing in the community. There is a blessing in receiving the help in the community that God has given us and assigned us to. There's a, ble there's a blessing in being able to help in within the community and help the people there who God has assigned us to. And we need that. We need that as we get gain strength for our journey as we navigate life. And the last thing I want you to remember which is probably the most um, sobering thing. And the, the thing that has the most value is that we will live again. We serve an eternal God. And as we trust and obey, God in his eternal love promises us not only an abundant life on earth, but an eternal life. And he assures us that this journey will not end but it continues in an eternal presence. So I know that adulting can be really tough. It can feel really tough right now. But as we navigate these ups and downs, remember, we're not on this journey alone. God is right beside us, guiding us each step. So today, let's ask him to see things from an eternal perspective, one that influences our decisions and the way in which we choose to live our lives. Because when we see the bigger picture, when we have a bigger picture in mind, our choices can reflect our true purpose. Our choices can honor God and inspire others to do the same. So keep adulting, <laughs> no matter how challenging it may be. Know that you are a part of something bigger. Know that there is hope. Know that this too shall pass, whatever adulthood is bringing you at this stage of your life. And knowing, know that you can keep, move, keep moving forward in faith and that there's so much to look forward to in this life and beyond. There are affirmations that I give at the end of every podcast. And so I'm going to give you a few. I'm not going to put them on the screen. Maybe in another episode, we'll put them on the screen. But I want you to say, I'm going to say these and I want you to repeat them after me. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do that. Ready? I acknowledge the growth and development God is guiding me through. I manage my time and resources with faithfulness. I value and seek support from my faith community. I practice gratitude in all situations. I extend grace to myself and others. And lastly, I embrace God's plan for my life, trusting that he has a purpose for me. I'm going to say that one again because I needed to hear that. I embrace God's plan for my life, trusting he has a purpose just for me. Listen, everyone, thank you for tuning in um, and for the affirmations. You can jot those down. You can journal to this, whatever works for you. I hope that you are fully equipped to master excellence in the world on this day. And I thank you for the privilege to be able to speak into your life. There are plenty of more episodes coming up, and I'm so excited to share more with you in this particular season. But for now, go be excellent. See you soon. Bye-bye.